Hi, and welcome to Me on Five. Uh, we uh, had a Christmas show, and now it's Valentine's Day. And the subject of tonight's uh, show is about what sort of influence did the organized crime, the mob out of, say, Boston, had over the state of Maine at any point in time. And with me to discuss this are two gentlemen who were right in the thick of it. One of them is Bobby Luisi, a former made man, a former capo regime with the Boston mob, as, he's, as they Philadelphia. call it. And uh, Paul Tanzo, who also was involved uh, with uh, the Boston Mafia, the Boston Costa Nostra, uh, for a number of years. Gentlemen, first of all, uh, Bobby, you've got a widely watched YouTube show. T tell us about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Bobby Luisi show. Okay. And Paul's my co-host on the show. Okay. Uh, we're on YouTube, <clears throat> and we do a live show every Wednesday night, and I do a lot of mob shows. You know, right. I got a lot of interviews, like what Michael Frantz says. Yes, right. I saw Larry, that one. Larry Mars, they're all these guys, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're all good friends, they're all good people. So I do interviews, and I cover some stories. And talking you, about the Boston mob. Right, yeah. and you folks have watched all over the world because, yes. let's face it, for anybody that watched the movie The, De the, the Departed or mm -hmm. any of the movies or any of the uh, uh, series about Whitey Bulge and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, Rob, you, take us in the main. Tell, tell well, us. F well, first of all, I want to make sure your show's on Wednesdays. Wednesday. Yeah. And, w and you're talking now about having a live show? Another live show. Yeah, okay. we're we'll talking. Paulie's going to have a, a lot of people go to Paulie. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Ask your questions. Sure. A lot of people out there have a lot of problems. You I, know, Paulie's good with them. I do a lot of help, like with addiction and mental illness yeah. and homelessness, because I suffered from all three of them. Sure. So I know how hard it is. You know, and uh, good for you, Paul. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So he's going to do his show and a segment on that. Okay. Excellent. That he can answer questions for people. So on every Wednesday, you can check out the uh, Bob Luisi show. Yep. Uh, and I've seen it several times, and it's excellent. You guys, you guys do a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Fascinating. Thank you. And uh, as, as far as Maine is concerned, uh, there have always been uh, assumptions or conspiracy theories that uh, that the mafia is involved with Scarborough Downs or the mafia. Right. You know, is, how prevalent is the mafia here in Maine? Right. And growing up in uh, with an Italian family in uh, yeah. in Bangor, actually, my my grandparents immigrated from Italy, settled in, on Atwell's Avenue in Providence, mm -hmm. and knew Mr. Patriaca very, very well. Oh, okay. And how yeah. he protected the neighborhood, and, what, and actually what a good man he was. Mm -hmm. and I hate, you know, I know people will take offense to that, but he was. He treated no, he the kids great. Yep. My father remembers him very, very well. And ultimately they moved up to Bangor, opened up a little Italian restaurant, and they always used to say, you know, uh, are you guys involved with organized crime? <laughs> the Baltimore. That, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And I hate the Baltimore. Yeah. Well, no. But, uh, Bobby, talk about your connections to the state of Maine. Paul, you too. Uh, and, well, I, uh, I had a crew up in Wells, Maine. Wells, Maine. Up in Wells. In Wells. Yeah. Yeah. Doing what? They <laughs> um, dabbled in a few different things. Okay. I know you, yeah. can't, you can't name any names. No, I'm no not going to name any names, no names but yeah. uh, it, it was cocaine. Okay. There were some guns. There was a few different things that okay. that crew was doing up there. And uh, that, that went on for several years. Okay. okay. Uh, we had that connection. Yeah. And uh, I used to go sometimes to York Beach to meet them. Yep. Yes. You know, I never had drugs on me or carry drugs. But if there was a meeting, I would go up several times. I had to go to Wells to straighten out a few problems yep. up there to right. let people understand that they were my friends. Right. Uh, like Beach. Capiche. <laughs> right. So uh, I would go to York all the time. I'd go to Wells. Yeah. Any yeah. further north? Port yeah. How about Old Dutch Beach? Ever? No, nothing up there. No. So but just I, a, the I'm southern part of Maine. Yeah, but I'm sure the crew that I was dealing with, yeah. uh, they were pro probably moving around pretty good. So basically, the, the primary uh, the, the thing that was going on that would have been illegal would have been the sales of drugs. Sales of drugs. But uh, no prostitution. No. No. Uh, you, you mentioned on, on, on my earlier show, the Derry Runlet show, that n no sale of heroin. No. Right. Uh, because you folks considered cocaine to be kind of a, a social, social drug being bought by fairly affluent people, most mm -hmm. of the party goers of the 90s, right? Yep. And yeah. And Paul, you, you, you too? Uh, yes. Yes, pretty much. That was my big thing was moving cocaine in pot. Um, right. Um, 
at one point, I think I was getting a thousand pounds of pot on the cuff and just tacking on 20,000 and flipping it. How did Jesus. you folks feel when, when, uh, when, they, when you started hearing about the legalization of marijuana? Was that good for you or bad for you? <laughs> well, now, you know, we've been out of the life for yeah, right. a long time, so yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter either way with us. Yeah. You know, the last shipment I got of marijuana from Arizona yeah. was probably 70, uh, 96 or 97. Yeah. That back when it. we were so in school, back, Derek. Yeah, way <laughs> so, back then. Yeah. Right. Uh, and f for you uh, now, uh, Paul mm -hmm. and, and Bobby, it's a whole different life for you because what you're doing now is you're doing these, these podcasts, these mm -hmm, YouTubes, mm -hmm. in which you're now trying to educate mm -hmm. uh, basically the country on, on uh, what, what this was like back in the day. Yes. Right. Now, um, uh, so other than, uh, other than the connections to, to York, any other ties to Maine, uh, Portland, or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, uh, Bobby Garant, uh, Bobby Garanti lived, yes. and he was gonna, he was supposed to be my underboss. Um, and he went to prison. We called him Monk. He lived at a gun, a gunquit, maybe. A yes. uh, he was up there, and he had a lot of people up here. We actually, what was it, Rockland, Maine? Yes, yes. Rockland. We yes. had a piece of a lobster company yes. up there too. Really? Uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, uh, we got the live lobsters off the dock. Yeah. My second show on Me on Five was about a couple of war heroes from Rockland, Maine, and my family. I have family from Rockland, Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to Rockland quite a lot. I, my first uh, job out of Bowdoin College was on a radio station up there, WRKD. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have some ties. Um, I, I'm going to uh, ask you, um, uh, Bobby. You you uh, you were involved in in, in 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 a murder case, correct? Yes. And and uh, and can you tell us about that at all? Or is it d difficult to talk about? Well, it's really not good to talk about. Okay. You know, the government accused me of being either doing or being involved in over half a dozen murders. Okay. Um, you know, I really can't talk too much about that. Right. It's a little tough. But, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've taken some lives, yeah. Well, Bobby, I appreciate your honesty. I remember reading amongst, among all the other stuff about you that they listed... 23 people <clears throat> that were killed, uh, just involving that thing that you talked about in the earlier show, and your father and your cousin and your brother were right. killed yes. uh, in a in, in what would, would be called a hit, I guess. Would they call that a hit kind of thing? Well, it was kind of accidental. Dental. Okay. You know, it wasn't planned. Oh, okay. so was, this wasn't a planned thing like what do I no, think? No, because when we go on a hit, it's planned. Yeah. It's planned. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we're going to get who we're after, that we're going to get away. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot to be put into killing somebody. It's not an easy thing to do. Because listen, any young kid could go on the in the street and shoot someone. Right. No one could do yeah. that. But to actually execute it and get away with it is a different story. Like the Paul Castellano hit mm -hmm. uh, in yes. New York yep. uh, with uh, Gravano right. and yes. mm -hmm. Gotti. Uh, mm -hmm. That was clearly an execution and planned. I'm, many yep. of them have been yes. like that. Yep. How, how accurate do you think the movie The Godfather was in terms of portraying the way it was and that would have been like the 50s and 60s? How accurate do you think that movie was in terms of portraying the five families and the way they... I, I think they did a pretty good job yeah. with that. Yeah. You know, I really did. I, I, you know, that movie's a classic. We all know yeah, that. We all love that movie. But, uh, yeah, it was yeah cool. everybody does. Don't you, know, you think that, because uh, I, I think some of our favorite movies, and my son Teddy's here in the audience, uh, and uh, he introduced me to A Bronx Tale, Chaz Palantir. That's, Terry, that's which, our favorite. To that's me, my favorite. To me, it's, the, it really it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. And uh, I've seen him do the one, one man show and the musical yes. and all of that. But you, you had The Bronx Tale, The Godfather, a Casino, Goodfellas. Good it's, <laughs> it glamorized right. to some degree your life. Mm -hmm. that you actually lived. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact did that have on you as La Cosa Nostra mobsters actually d living this day in and day out? You, you saw those movies. What, what did it do in terms of your whole uh, culture? And uh, did, you enjoy, did you think that was cool? Yeah. Did you? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I wasn't into the gangster movies, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, we were actually living it these people sure. are actors. Right. The Bronx Tale I loved, yeah. and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, tell Chad us. Chad was a neighborhood 
Chaz was a neighborhood sonny, yeah. a neighborhood capo. Yes. And the way he ran his crew, that's how the mob is. Okay. Mm. You know, I mean, I know uh, everything that happened. Well, good fellas and all those other oh, movies. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. And uh, like Donnie Brasco. Yes. Donnie Brasco, yes. Yeah, there was a lot of privileges taken there. I know a lot more <laughs> about that story. Right. Yeah. But uh, they're all pretty accurate in their own way. But yeah. I'm not really a gangster movie guy. Yeah. Well, I mentioned to you. I kind of criticize them, to be honest with you. Do you have, Francais does as well on yeah. his show. That's he he takes a critical look at it. I mentioned to you that I'm friends with uh, Bobby Rydell, whose real name is Robert Ridarelli, and one of his good friends is Chaz Palminteri. Oh, wow. And I'm working on a project now for Bobby Rydell in which Chaz has been consulted. Wonderful man, by the way. Um, yes. Uh, I haven't met him, but I think I'm possibly going to. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, the, the, the biggest show that hit TV when it hit was The Sopranos. Oh, yeah. Did you ever have any involvement with the New Jersey folks? Because you're doing Philadelphia. You, you originally, you worked you in went Boston. right through Jersey. Yeah. So how about the New Jersey people? Right? Was that? Well, I'll tell you, that, that was supposed question. to be after the, the Cavalcanti family. Okay. Yeah. And I was in prison with several of them. You were? Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> nice, great guys. Really? Anthony Rotunda, Anthony yeah. Capo. Yeah. Vinnie Ocean. These are all big names in the family. Sure. The Sopranos itself, I still watch. I, I, I do like We that. love it. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but what? <laughs> well, listen, except when you're in a war, you know, they kill too many people in the show. They get away with a little too much. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. never got caught. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, you know, it's pretty accurate. Okay. Because, you know, kind of like Tony, I had the blonde wife. Yeah. I had the son and the daughter. At the time. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you were very, uh, uh, so what was your, quote, legitimate business? With Tony, it was waste management. What, <laughs> what, is, what was your legitimate uh, cover, cover? I was opening up restaurants and coffee shops and, okay. you know, I was doing that. Okay, so you were known for being a, a restauranteer when, in fact, you were uh, a, a mob boss. Yeah. <laughs> And Paul, what were you doing? I was always taking classes for something, one thing or another. <laughs> jewelry classes. <laughs> yeah, jewelry, yeah. bladesmith, yeah. Uh, course completion from Boston Architectural Center. Um, I'm a big art fan and museums and stuff. You, you know, awesome. it gets to the point that the surveillance is so bad yeah. on us yeah. that yes. no matter what we open or try to do. Right. Even if we try to go legit at some point. Bobby, still, still today? Yeah, I was just going to ask you. You think you're still today? I mean, would they? Well, I came home and back to Boston yeah, right. for good in 2018. Yep. And the first <laughs> visit as I got was the state police and the DEA. Wow. Yep. They wanted to know why I was back here. Okay. So they just I mean they just like, hi, we're here. What are you doing here? Yeah, basically. And, and what, what do you say? <laughs> I, I so want listen, a lawyer. I'm back here. I'm going to sell cars. I don't want to know nothing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they they trusted you with that. No, no, they followed no. me for a little while. Yeah. You know, they visits. followed me for a little while. I got a few yeah. visits. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was funny. It was good. But great. They were good people. Yeah. This is going to sound like a stupid question, gentlemen, but with, back then, they didn't have a TV on every lamppost. Yeah. So wouldn't it be a little difficult to do some of the things that were being done back then if there were all this television surveillance, the cameras everywhere? Oh, yes. And the DNA? Oh. The DNA? Oh, evidence? yeah. It, no, today it's, it's really hard. Yeah. Okay. It's really hard today. I mean, you Is know, there a mafia today I'm of just, any the, consequence? Rob, you're, you're taking the word. Yes. Is, is, uh, what's happening today? Good question. Well, I could talk for the Patriarca family. They're still there yeah, sure. in Boston. Yeah. Uh, my old crew was still in Boston, the Philly family. Okay. That old, my faction still right. there. Yeah. And uh, Philadelphia, they're building their family back up again. Yeah. I see. So this, but the problem here, you know, when you were back at Jerry and Julio's days. Yes. And I know all these people will know that name. Oh, yeah, I do too. You know, uh, this uh, government wasn't as hard. Mm -hmm. There was big, the numbers business, the loan shark business. Oh, right. Today, really, what could you really grab unless it's drugs? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's really not much out there anymore that you could grab. Gambling is legal everywhere. It's all legal. Uh, yeah. Legalized yeah. marijuana. What, yes. What, yeah. what can you guys do? Sell cotton candy. That's what they, they got nothing left. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> uh, it's dying. It'll never be the same. We, I got picked up in 1999. Yep. And uh, on drugs, Bobby. Yeah. Was, was that on a drug charge? Yeah. And uh, that murder indictments came later. Yeah. And what we always said, this is going to be the last of it. 
Yeah. The mob changed in the year 2000 when right. we were gone. The violence was over, everything was over. Mm -hmm. And it quieted it down, you know? And it's never going to be the way it was. The 90s in Boston and Philadelphia were wild. Yeah. You, you know that. We and were the last of the cowboys, basically. We were the last. The turn yeah. of the last century. And you said there was, quote, a war going on, which mm. would be similar to what we read about with a war between the families in, yes. in, in The Godfather and, uh, and, and The Sopranos, the wars that, that were going on. Um, but now you're 100% you're legitimate. You got the TV show, both of you, and um, you're situated in Boston. Now, the mm. North End. Is 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 that still have any influence? What, whatever, with anybody pulling shenanigans, or is it all legitimate? I'm, I'm really not sure. Yeah. I mean, when I go in there, I don't recognize anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, right. in our day, yeah, there were wise guys on every corner. Yeah. I see. You know, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. But you're still treated with respect every time and love oh, when yeah, we go no, down there. Sure. And I'm down there all the time. You know, you know but I it's not film episodes. Mafia headquarters anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The way it was, in you, Jerry and Julio's day and my day. That's all. Right. Are you fairly well recognized when you walk around <laughs> the streets of Boston because yeah, oh, of yeah. your? Still am. Yeah. yeah. Even uh, when we go shopping, people stop them outside. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. You know when yeah. COVID was really bad, I, I, I still take care of my mother and father. You do? Yeah, yes. I go shop for them. I do everything for them. They're great. Take them to the doctors. I love them. Yeah. You know my stepfather. Stepfather. Great guy, yeah. Santo. Yeah. So I'm in stop and shop. I got the mask on. And uh, I asked the kid, my mother wanted some Mexican mixed, I don't, I don't know. So I asked, the, I asked the woman next to me, the kid heard it. He went around, he got it, and he came back to the package. I know who you are, you're Bobby Luis. Oh, really? God's I sakes. know that accent anywhere. Recognize it. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of places we go, people recognize yeah. us now. You know, it's really something. Yeah. It's so really has something. anybody told you that, for those of us that watched The Godfather, that Vincent Pastore, uh, Big Pussy, you're a lot better looking than Big Pussy. You've got yeah. similar, <laughs> similar sort of look about you. Yeah. 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 You're, just, yeah. you're, you're very, very well presented, but you, mm -hmm. yeah, you look, I mean, you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you believe this guy? Uh, when I walked in today, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, so you two have been friends uh, most of your life. Oh, since I was he a child. Grew up, he grew up with my brothers, and my younger cousins. Okay. okay, he's a few years younger than me. And okay. you'd be how old if I can ask you? Buddy? I'm sixty. You're sixty, and you mm. are. I'm fifty-seven. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, what I was going to say is, after you get out of prison, yep. Bobby, you uh, entered the witness protection program. Right. And as far as another main connection, this is one that you might want to talk about. You, you uh, kind of moved around the country a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then you actually spent time in Maine. Can yeah, you talk about happened, that, Bob? Uh, when, I, when I got out of prison, yeah. I was immediately put in the Women's Protection Program. Okay. So they brought me up here and they hid me up here. <laughs> okay. Up here? For a few months, yeah. Well, Sid, we started off with ties to Maine, and here, you, you, you spent some well, time. That's, that's why, why I brought it. Come <laughs> to the show. I wanted to keep that. Yeah, so I was up here. Now, I'm up in Maine. Yes. I'm not going to say where yeah. it was, but it was close by. Okay. And I'm in a restaurant with the people that are taking care of me. Yeah. And a girl I knew from the North then was sitting there. She uh -huh. had married somebody. She lives in Maine now. Yeah. Happens okay. to be in that restaurant. Comes running up to me, Bobby, how you doing? <laughs> and, you're gonna, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do, because oh, they're sitting with me over here, and they're shocked yeah. that I'm in Maine and somebody right. knows me. Mm. You know, and... Uh, That's incredible. Well, this is... That yeah. they moved me out of Maine, they put me in New Hampshire. <laughs> Live free or die. Bobby, yeah. that's right out of the Sopranos. Yeah. When yeah. Tony's bringing his daughter up to Bowden and Colby, he goes into Colby and he recognizes a guy that yep. supposedly is now a travel agent. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kills he, him. Yeah. Now, he one of the things that you, that you were proud of is that you did not testify against anybody. No, I didn't. You were, you were going to, but you, you, you reneged on your promise. Correct? Yes. What happened? I got arrested on the cocaine charge. Right, yes. right, right. Carried 10 to 12 years. And uh, during the course of that, a uh, very close friend of mine was in there. He was a main guy in the Patriarca family. Mm -hmm. We were in Plymouth at the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, did you hear, Bobby? There's renter indictments coming down. So I asked my lawyer. He grabs Marty Bedroll, used to be an AUSA, in the Boston office. So he comes down with Marty, he says, Bobby, they got your cold. Your friends are ratting on you. You know, 
and uh, I didn't know if it was one or two murders what it was. Mm -hmm. He says, I could get you the 10 to 12 right now on the drug charge, but you're not going to get out. You know, they're talking about it up there. They finally got you. Yeah. You know, you know how the feds are. You know, when they got, they got their witnesses, they right. got their team, whatever they got. So I decided I was mad, and I decided to talk because I was okay. tired of being a pink cushion. Sure. Mm -hmm. I know of 13 men that I knew about that was given information on me when I was still on the street mm -hmm. that I got arrested. Yeah. So, you know, it was polluted with informants, the I whole see. system. Right. So I says, all right, I don't want to be the pink cushion anymore, and I talked to the government. And the government wanted to give me a great deal, but I didn't have it in me to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we make decisions right. that aren't right. Right. So I had to renege. And, and because of that, you ended up doing some fairly serious time. Yeah, yeah, I reneged, and I went to trial on my underlining indictment, and I got 20 years. Right. And uh, luckily, I won an appeal on that. Right. Went back again to trial then. and got 15 eight. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when I began the, my, the first show, the Derry show, I, I said to you, I, are you pleased to be alive? And you said you are, yep. both of you. Mm -hmm. yep. um, uh, I, I'm going to throw in a name now that is... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get a smile on both your faces when I throw the na name. Isabella Stewart Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Does, do we know where those paintings are? Do we, does, does anybody know where the artwork is? <laughs> All right. Nobody really knows. Okay. But that's how I got on the witness protection program. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah this that's is great. This is fascinating. Yeah. Go this ahead. is how I got it. Oh. I was ready to get out. Now I'm in 14 years, I'm divorced. Right. My money's all gone. Right. I didn't know what I was going to do. I really yeah. had no place to come back to in Boston. I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. You know, after 14 years, you lose all your money. Yeah. So they came to me over the gardener. Now, Bobby Garanti, that lived up, up in Maine, there might have been some, uh, actually, some artwork up there. So we're sitting on the couch one day in our safe house. And something came on the TV. He says to me, Bobby, I know where they're buried. They're buried under a slab in Florida. <laughs> you can go get them. <laughs> I never realized the value. And I, you know, I didn't move things like that because we already had New York connections, right. Philadelphia connections. Yeah. So he wanted to push it through that way. So I let it die, not knowing the value. I just let it die. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they come to me. I told them the story. Yeah. And it put pieces together for yeah. them. So they says, all right, we're going to help you get in the witness protection program. Mm. And they came to me for something else uh, <laughs> about a case that was going on in Boston that I had nothing to do with. They just wanted me to, I was the boss at the time, so they just wanted me to come and give that layout like I'm kind of doing today. Yeah. And uh, so they put me in the witness protection. Yeah. That's yeah. how I got in there, was the Goddard Art Museum. <laughs> We always get we always get accused of they keep saying tell let Paulie tell us where the <laughs> paintings are. Yeah. Do you know where it is? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, I have a history of pulling scores, and at eighteen I actually robbed the Arms Museum up Faneuil Hall. <laughs> get out of here! Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Me and my friend Billy Rod use his nickname. We were eighteen at the time. Nah, we 18. robbed the Arms Museum. Yeah, wow. and we. Uh, Pulled all kinds of scores back then, you know, whatever. Well, we, we all we all know the reason. I, I, what I, I said, you guys, were gonna, guys was going to get a smile to your face. Yeah. And I didn't realize I was going to get actual laughter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because because I was hoping Rob and I were hoping mm. to solve the Isabella Stewart guy right here and now, right that here and now <laughs> on this <laughs> channel. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the SWAT team comes in. Oh and my, oh my God. God! Thank goodness, <laughs> these, thank goodness for these two main guys that solve if we can find all the pain. It was, yeah. was it, like fifteen taken a. I, was it 13? I 13. think so. Yeah. I, don't, I have a big show yeah, on my channel see, with that. Was yeah, that's how I caught do, him. Do you? Very good yeah. man, Steve. Steve that's how yeah. I caught you, Bobby. I said 15. He goes, no, 13. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 13. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Kirkland is, uh, Steve Kirkland is excellent, and I'm, I'm actually helping him on something right now, right. trying to recover and another so stolen artifact. So when you do your shows, you? uh, yeah. Bobby and Paul, do you, do you show, like, pictures of some of the people you're talking about? Do you oh, show, yes. like, you know? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. I Barboza. Barboza, you did, a, did one. He mm -hmm. was a notorious oh. uh, gangster in yeah. Boston. Yeah. Did you know him at all, or did you? No, I was too young. Too then. young at the time. But, but it was I a great show. But I got to tell you a story about Joe Barboza. Yeah. yeah. 
We got about, you got to be, be quick. Go ahead. All right. Well, he used to love my mother's cooking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. That's a true story. Notorious uh, yeah. gangster. My, my mother used to cook for a bar room in East Boston. Okay. And he used to go in there and he loved their galamari, <laughs> their lasagna. Yeah. Yeah. What a cook she is, uh, too. Yeah. Really? Before yeah. we close, I do want to mention a, a friend of mine, a friend of Steve Schwartz, is in the studio with, with me here. Uh, Steve, a former president of the uh, uh, Maine Criminal Defense Lawyers, and a, a, a gentleman by the name of Robert P uh, Napolitano. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bobby Napolitano was a, a great lawyer here in Portland. And in his office, he had a picture of himself sitting next to Raymond Patriarch, <laughs> some sort of house, house committee. Yeah. And I said, Bobby, uh, uh, why do you have the picture of this gentleman here? He goes, well, Derry, that's Raymond Patriarca. Yeah. I said, so you don't want a picture of you and Kennedy? Are you in a, you know, something good? <laughs> he goes, Derry, when people come in that I'm representing, which are mostly criminals, yeah. I tell them, this yeah. is my, he said, that's what they want to see. They don't want to see a picture of me and Ted Williams. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Raymond was bigger than Kennedy, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> so, uh, gentlemen, uh, I, I just can't thank you enough for coming here today. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank thank you for having us. Uh, and uh, Rob, I want to thank you for saying well, it Anytime. Up. I think I told you folks that thanks to my friend Rob, we had the last interview with uh, Effie Bailey, yes. uh, who represented you, as you told me in the earlier mm -hmm. show. For pro bono, too. Uh, and, and that's yeah. what's amazing about it. And got yeah. you off. Well, if you ever want to do a show on it, just get in touch with it and I can uh, do the whole thing with you. Well, yeah. I, I, we're going to do that. Because yeah. uh, because we, uh, we uh, Rob and I are, are, are focused on trying to uh, have a, have a, either a seminar or something special about F. Lee Bailey because mm -hmm. we were friends with him as was uh, Steve Schwartz mm -hmm. who I've mentioned. So um, I, I, we're going to take you up on that offer, okay. uh, folks. We're going to now uh, break and we're going to have dinner with these wonderful gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, and I can't thank you enough for being on the show, my friend Rob. Thank thanks you. for uh, setting it up. Thank you. Uh, by the way, Rob's son playing uh, for Greeley on Saturday at the Expo against, we don't That's know right. yet, but they're seated number two. Uh, we <laughs> give uh, lots of luck to Teddy uh, Baldacci. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. What a thank pleasure. You, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah.